Yo, we're back for Thursday. What's up, great friends? Grande with you guys today, and Lawhead will also be here as well. Uh, so let's have a great day because there is plenty to talk to talk about, and we'll also talk um to some people as well with more coming up. But let's start off by thanking our sponsors, our wonderful, fantastic sponsors like Gary Cooper. Give him a call, 858. 858- 376-1299, mountressrealty.com. If you're looking to buy a home, looking to sell a home, there's only one guy to call, and that's Gary. And what I love about the number that we give you, 858-376-1299, is that it's not going to go to some automated message where you're like, oh, hit two, hit three. No, you Gary answers the phone, and that's the way it should be, the personal touch and his expertise in the entire market is bar none, the best around. I bought my home with Gary Cooper. He can help you buy a home or sell your home. If you want more information, go to mountaintrustrealty.com or like we always prefer and he prefers. Give him a call, 858-376-1299. Brought to you by Life Brew. Uh, I had a cup of Life Brew this morning, actually. Lifebrew.com with a Y, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com. You can use our promo code KLIFE20 to get 20% off your purchase at Mushroom Life or life brew so go check them out it is an instant coffee hot water put a little dab of uh, or a scoop excuse me of the coffee into your mug twirl it it's got some other things in it that makes it almost taste like a latte it's very very good uh sustained energy mental focus mental focus it's got all the the uh the different types of mushrooms that you could imagine it is a really really good product whether brett believes me or not i promise you it's a very good product so check out uh life brew at K Life 20 is our promo code lifebrew.com. All right. Seven Mile Casino, just minutes south of downtown San Diego. I uh, drove by yesterday and it's so close to downtown. It's crazy. Like we say, like just like five minutes, maybe. It's literally right off the five freeway. And the great thing about Seven Mile Casino is a it is such a clean, smoke free environment. It's not like one of those ratty, trashy casinos that you walk into and it's all you smell sick. No, it is clean in there. It is nice. And have all your favorite table games. And my favorite part too, they got TVs everywhere. So if you're looking to watch a sporting event, that's a great place to go. They have a Sammy's restaurant and bar with a full bar. uh, Incredible tap list. Seven Mile Casino. Go check it out this weekend. If you don't have any other plans, why not go check out Seven Mile Casino? It is great. Uh, SevenMileCasino.com for more information. Also, we will talk to Corby Craig from BetUS. Um, It is Final Fours here. And San Diego State's not in it, but that doesn't mean we can't get prepared to make some legal gambling wagers on BetUS. We'll talk to Corby Craig more about that coming up. Blenders, dude, they have come out with a new line of sunglasses today um, called the Citrus Hype Collection. And they're so Chase Fisher. Like when you see these sunglasses, you're like, yep, those are so Chase Fisher. Like they are sick. Uh, they got the Buttertron Spark Lime sunglasses, the Meister 2 Spark Lime. Like it, they're just like so different and so unique. And the cool thing I love about blenders is that it is they are literally they are so affordable, but the durability and the quality is top notch. They're polarized. I was rocking them yesterday as I climbed Cal's Mountain. And I'll tell you guys what happened yesterday. I was rocking my Red Bulls climbing Cal's Mountain, it, and you, you kind of forget you're wearing them. Like it, it. There's I don't know how they do it, but it is such a great product. I love blenders. I am a blenders guy forever now whether they're here advertising with us or not. I love um, Blenders. So use our promo code Kaplan and you'll get 20% off your order at BlendersEyewear.com. Promo code Kaplan. And finally, Price Picks. Uh, We're going to get you ready for the weekend. Let's have some fun together, man. If you guys haven't downloaded the app, download the app at Price Picks on the App Store, uh, whatever App Store you use. And use our promo code GREATFRIENDS. They'll match your first deposit up to $100. That's right. So use the promo code Great Friends or scan the QR code if you're watching. Download the app. Use promo code Great Friends. They'll match your first deposit up to one hundred dollars. We'll talk more about price picks and give you guys some more winners with Jason as we start the show. But I think now it is time to start the show. So let's do it. What's up, everybody? We're back. Sorry about this weird ass schedule this week, but we're back. Myself, Grande, and Lawhead with you guys here on a Thursday. Uh, if you're watching this, listening to this, 
We sincerely appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube specifically, let me talk to you. Like this thing. Subscribe to this channel. And share it. Why not? Share it to a friend. Help us grow, which we've been growing slowly but progressively. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button. We sincerely appreciate you all being here. And I know when Scott's not here, you know, we lose some people. And I get it. It's his freaking show. It's called Captain and Crew. It's not called anybody else's crew. So uh, thank you all for being here. Sincerely appreciate it. Uh, before I introduce Jason and we get started, uh, let me just thank Seven Mile Casino. I actually drove by. I, was, I went down to the outlets yesterday before I dropped my wife. I had so much to do yesterday. It was a crazy day. I went down to the outlets with my wife before we went to the airport. And like every time I drive by, it's so close. It's so freaking close to downtown. It's like right there. You can literally miss the exit. And I love that they put a billboard up going north. And they're like, Seven Mile Casino, get off here. You know, so I love that they're now advertising like, dude, it's right here because it's so easy to miss because it's so close to downtown San Diego. But Seven Mile Casino, smoke-free environment, super clean, all your favorite table games, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, full bar, great tap list, and my favorite, tons of TVs everywhere. So if you want to watch a game, if you want to watch a sporting event, go to Seven Mile Casino, play your favorite table games, have some fun, have some drinks, watch the game. What are you doing this weekend? Go check them out. Seven Mile Casino. Seven Mile Casino dot com. All right. We were off yesterday. I had a I had a crazy day. I think I would have been off if Browner and Scott were here. I just had a crazy day. Um, as soon as the morning finished, it was like boom, boom, boom. I was out the house all day. But let me bring on Jason so I could tell him what I did yesterday. Jason, first of all, Can't thanks wait. again. Yeah. Appreciate it, bro. Hello to all the great friends. Thanks Shout out to in. all the great friends. Absolutely. Uh Jay. Before we get into sports, because there's so much that I would love to talk about, um, mm -hmm. missing yesterday gives us a little, a lot more to talk about because I feel, um, well, A, the Padres avoided the sweep. Let's just go through this. The Padres avoided the sweep. Uh, Joe Musgrove and Hugh Darvish, finally, some decent outings, even though one of them didn't win. Still, finally, some decent outings. Um, they have a home opener for the San Francisco Giants tomorrow, so you get to see Bob Melvin again uh, in San Francisco. Uh, you got the Oakland A's, dude. I need to talk about this because these dudes are moving to a minor league park. And by all reports, if you thought the Coliseum was bad, just wait for a major league team to show up to this AAA stadium in Sacramento. We'll get into that. Uh, we were both wrong about how big the LSU Iowa basketball game was. It was way bigger than we thought. Like we, we thought it was big, but it was way bigger than we thought. Not only that, were the TV ratings monster, Jay, the amount of money brought in literally crazy. in the sports books crazy so we'll get into that jim harbaugh had his first press conference as the chargers go to ata otas he did his thing but i got to introduce the great friends to the new Chargers strength and conditioning coach this guy is a psychopath he's an absolute <laughs> psychopath and we need to play a little bit of that what else do i have written down today the final four is this week and i know Two final I think fours. I, final I, fours. Do you think, we'll talk about this. Do you think the women's have a chance to outdraw the men's this year? I don't know. I have, I have to look up the men's final four ratings to see what that's going to look like. But um, And then a big trade in the NFL, a huge trade in the NFL, and a former Aztec does something incredible last night. And the NFL network is just chopping heads all of a sudden. Craziness. There's so much to get to. So we will get to it. Before we get to it all, Jay, how you doing today, man? Good, man. Uh, always fun being in the chair, whether it's uh, the whole crew, part of the crew, just me and you. I'm starting yeah. to rhyme a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, a uh, lot to talk about. And like you mm -hmm. said, uh, we actually kind of prefixed on Monday a little bit about, you know, Darvish and, and Musgrove and how important those next couple of starts are, win or lose or mm -hmm. whatever. So um, excited. Can't wait to talk about some of the absurdities of this A's situation and then the final four but you know yeah. just near and dear to my heart you know there's a I, I hang a picture with my my father and the legendary John Wooden and then in that corner there's me and my dad at the 2013 final game uh yeah. when Louisville beat uh, Michigan so yeah man uh when did, you was know that, doing was, my that a, uh, was that a stadium already or was it still an arena in 2013 the final that was in the the Atlanta Dome. So okay. that was in the um the dome that uh the Atlanta Falcons play in. 
So it was so already it stadium. is the stadium. It was already like yeah. a stadium. Yeah. yeah. I was so trying to remember when the... they when they moved to stadiums for the final four instead of basketball arenas. And I don't know when. Do you know when? You know, I, I don't. I, 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 you know, I think they may have flirted with a few back in the day here and there. I, I want to say the, the old Pontiac Silverdome may have okay. hosted one sometime in the 90s and so. And then they would get back to arenas and, uh, you know, every once in a while they might dip their toe in, in one. And then once these major football arenas became so functional um i think that's kind of they had to have made a commitment probably i'd say probably around that time 10 to 12 years ago was probably mm -hmm. when they started going full bore into these football stadiums that were so modern and and so able to be kind of feng shui in a way right. to uh to play basketball in i love the uh the conversation the first day of so today later today the media availability for final four it'll be like you know the sight lines are so different in a stadium i don't you know the mm -hmm. offense is going to struggle and it's like well What's Purdue going to do then? Because they're already bad at offense. So um, I, I, it is crazy, though, because I know a year ago, the Aztecs were in the Final Four, and that was my first ever yeah. Final Four experience. And it, it was really cool because you brought up the Atlanta Dome. It's really interesting when you go to Houston for the Final Four because NRG Stadium is literally right next to the old Astrodome. That's still there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's still abandoned and, I think, unused now. I don't even do rodeos there anymore. Like I'm pretty sure it's just they don't deep. do anything there, like monster I don't trucks so. or rodeos or nothing. I could huh? be wrong, but I don't yeah. think so. I was I was told by someone there in the phone, like, yeah, they don't even use it anymore. I mean, will they ever tear that down, or is that just one of those things? Like uh, everything's bigger in Texas, so we're just gonna leave it up. To we're people. gonna leave it. Oh, dude, Houston, they got space. Uh, Houston's so <laughs> freaking <laughs> spread out. They got space, dude. So. They do, and That's it's not like they're. City. It's not like the, the the midway here where they're battling for for space, you know, in right. Houston. They they got the space and yeah, you know, they're yeah. So it, it I, I had such a blast. And even though the Aztecs lost in that championship game, when you brought up that picture, I'll never forget the final four. So final four is always gonna have some I'm gonna have some fond memories, especially probably because the shot. You know, if Aztecs oh, would have lost the FAU, I would have been so like screw the final four, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, for a while there it looked live bad. forever in in not just aztec history but just in like you know the unsung hero the little guy the final four it's always going to mm -hmm. be somewhere in the annals of history and it'll always be dropped in a highlight reel and you know whether butler goes on to a long or any type of nba career um uh which is up in the air you know you never know his he defense could come came. back he could come back to san diego state he right? could come back to san diego state i'm just right. saying in the length of his you know remember that guy you know maybe right. maybe his defense carries him enough to to have enough cups of coffee in the nba where people remember him a little bit but um yeah that shot will always be you know one of those like who was that guy from san diego state right. my, my, oh yeah that was amazing you know yep for sure uh, but so before we get into details of all that, Jay, can I just tell you a, a really quick random thing that Love has it. been happening to me the last two days? So I woke up super early yesterday because I know I have so much to do. And uh, I've been on, you know, I lost all this weight. So I'm trying to keep it off. Mm -hmm. And so I've been woke up to go climb Cal's Mountain. To, okay. I, that's, and I was like, you know, it's super nice out finally. It's not hot. So I was like, you know, let me just go climb this thing. And dude, it rained so much. There is a legitimate like, river going down the the trails there's like just water all along the trails like that's just running down the mountain in my entire life of san diego i've lived here since 2006 i've climbed that mountain i don't know 100 times maybe never once have i seen any sort of wildlife besides yeah. like an occasional mouse right you know bro yesterday i'm coming down the mountain and this lady just stops like in her tracks and goes white she just goes absolute like i was like what and i was like i was she was coming up i was going down so we're about to cross paths and she stops bro when i tell you rattler the biggest rattlesnake i've ever seen uh. live was right in between us and both of us were like we should move not move. <laughs> yeah. what is the because if we scare it, will it strike one of us? Or will it, do we leave it alone? Will it just walk away? You know, I don't, listen, I don't have any experience with rattlesnakes, especially in Cal's Mountain. The last thing I expect to see was a rattlesnake. Unless I'm wrong, I didn't even know they were, they were up there. Up there. So, 
we stop, we chill, and the thing just starts rattling, mm-hmm. looking at her. And I was like, yeah, take her. Leave was me it, alone. Was it coiled or was it, was it showing its head? Do it was showing its head. Oh, wow. Okay. And so I don't know yeah. if that's because it was moving across. Well, that means it wants to strike. Yeah. Or it was or, moving yeah. across the trail. It stopped. It pokes its head up. It rattles. And I was like, bro, this is not the way. Get I away. ain't trying to get. I'm not trying to get helicoptered off Cal's Bell. No. Right now. Well, you, know? you could. Um, and, and the thing is, is if it's a time. juvenile, the one thing I did learn a little bit about rattlesnakes living out here, uh, my cousins live up in Fallbrook and have a beautiful estate up in the hills there. Mm. And I mean, I, they've had, I've seen everything out there on their property i've seen rattlesnakes i've seen tarantulas i've seen scorpions <laughs> yeah <laughs> no dude i mean i'm not kidding you last year no, I my, bet my, you. last yeah. september my parents were visiting and staying up there in their their lush guest house and everything and they have a nice pool looking over the canyon so we were just like hanging out there for and we're just hanging out on the patio just looking yeah you know, about yeah. just by the pool and all of a sudden my mom's like what is that all right and a freaking tarantula mm-hmm. man walking across the patio but um it's the juveniles that will okay. kill you. So I what have no idea. Is, yeah. So the 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 juveniles and the bait the, the ones oh, the that, smaller ones. Yeah, because they, what they don't know is, um, as I guess as the 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 rattlesnake grows older, from what I understand, it understands that the it will strike in defense and only empty a little venom, just a little, okay. because um, it knows it needs to store venom if it needs to continue to strike and fight. Whereas the juvenile, it will just empty its venom on you. Hey. So the juveniles are much more dangerous because when the juvenile is feels threatened, it, it hasn't had the kind of experience or hunt, you know, it doesn't have the nature or instincts to um, keep, you know, supply for defending right. itself. So it'll empty its venom on you. And that is those are the ones that like kill people. So so who knows alert. if it was a juvenile spoiler or not, alert, but- I'm still here. <laughs> so I didn't get bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that would be like the craziest thing. You know, like to me, it was crazy because I I've seen snake. You know, I grew up in Ventura County. There's some trails out there up in Ojai that I would go climb. And, you know, one time I saw a double headed snake, which I was like, what? 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 But yeah, dude, it was, like I was like that. stuff right there. Isn't and, it that yeah. It was to you? Did it tell you to eat an apple? Yeah. What the yeah and I said, yeah. So um, no, um, I so I've seen snakes, but I've never seen a rattler, a rattlesnake out like that. And. I was like, okay, that's the craziest thing that's going to happen today. So uh, once it really slowly takes its time and it gets into, like at this point, because it was so busy on Cal's yesterday. At this point, there's maybe 30 people waiting for this damn thing to cross. And so the thing crosses and I'm like, all right, let's go. So I start going down and I'm going down two minutes later. I'm at the switchback point. So I'm, I'm like coming back and forth, back and forth. Two minutes later, I just see a woman videoing the mountain and i was like that can't be another one there's no way that's another like she must be taking a picture of, of something else like whatever a flower or something it was so green up there i've never seen Kells mountain that green either she's like hey stop there's a rattlesnake right there I'm like a freaking another one and this one jay was even bigger this was a big boy big, big boy i put this one on my instagram story and dude it was huge. And this freaking guy, this old dude, maybe in his 50, not no not old dude. I, I take that back. But if you're in your 50s, you're young and beautiful. And, I, and, and I'm not calling you old. This dude in his 50s. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> was like, oh, rattlesnake? Yeah, leave. They won't do anything to you. And he just like runs right by the snake, like reacts like, is this dude about to hit, hit me? And then you just see it poke his head up and rattle as a dude. Well, I was like, why are you doing this to me and this lady, man? Like, yeah. you're, you're leaving us. And this thing just, like, stared my way, came my way. I start backing up. I was like, I'm not going to get bit by the snake. <clears throat> I'm just not. Or at least I'm going to try. I started taking my little water backpack off. I was like, if I have to swing at this thing, I will. And it just stopped. And it just slithered away. And I was like, dude, what in the F is happening on Cal's Mountain right now? Um yeah, well, it's been a long afternoon. cold winter for these snakes, and right. I did read some report where they're they're going to be more visible. Uh, there, there's like there, there's going to be a, a higher birth rate because of that. Okay, and um, because you know they've been denned for so much longer, the warm weather hasn't come mm-hmm. as quickly, and so they've been denned in this winter for longer, which I guess um means that they'll 
lay more eggs. Okay, that's scary. Um, so I'm I'm done going to Cow's Mountain then for, for a while. <laughs> now, did you hear the rattler? How wasn't that thing really loud? It was really did loud. Did you notice dude. it? Because the one I thing didn't. I noticed No, if that lady wouldn't have stopped and if the uh if the other lady wasn't taking a picture, I would have totally ran by it. 100%. But you would have eventually heard like it, it once you got to it, it would have I been think like, because what? I stopped. I think because I stopped, it was so you know when you're like I plus I had beats okay uh, yeah, beats on there's other noise yeah. there's outside noise mm -hmm. see one thing i noticed when i was this close to one years ago at my cousin's house was and it was quiet right it was just on their property there was nobody hiking there was no other really exterior noise what i was blown away was because i had only seen rattlesnakes on tv mm -hmm. and you hear the sound of them through the the audio of the tv is how loud that rattle is when it's mm -hmm. in your ear live near you. And that thing is like, it's a hiss that you'll yeah. never like it, it is. Something you'll never want to hear it again. Forget, and you'll never yeah. want to hear it again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A, yeah. I mean, it is like, it's like, you know, those sprinklers that go, it's yeah, like yeah. 50 of those with yeah. on a microphone. It's crazy, wow. dude. Crazy. And this morning, to, uh, wildlife is following me this morning i go walk my dog it's 6 45 in the morning i walk out my building and what do i see walk across the gate this big ass coyote dude i'm in the middle of the day <laughs> and listen in north park we know that there's a coyote in north park i think there's an instagram account for it um i've seen it once and it was a big boy but it was at night and it was like down an alley somewhere today walk the dog see the coyote go across i was like what is happening okay so I chill for a second. I don't need my dog to go try and chase this thing or or whatever. So I, I let it walk and I kind of like peek over the wall and I'm like, okay, it's walking that way. So I come out and it stops in front of my neighbor's yard and it's just posted. And I was like, oh, damn, like this thing is, is looking my way or something. But his head's on a swivel, head's on a swivel, head's on. I was like, what's happening? And then it like kind of scurries away. It doesn't run. It just kind of like scurries away. It's like, I'm like, all right, it's gone now. You know, I'll, I'll walk the dog like normal. I get to the corner. I look to the right. Dude, there's two coyotes wow. on the corner just like chilling. Yeah, they're looking for and gray dogs and cats. No. One of them, I think I hit by a car because oh. it was not using its back right leg. Oh. And it was a smaller one. And I think the big one was trying to look was... after it. Oh. And and sad. they're and you know they're startled because they're, they're, sure. this thing can barely walk. I mean, it's walking, but it's not using its back right leg. And so I call San Diego uh, Animal Emergency. I was like, "Yo, I don't know if you guys pick up coyotes, but I think this coyote got hit by a car or something." And there's two of them. And in my neighborhood, everybody walks their dog at seven in the morning. It's packed out here with people with dogs, and we're literally like, there's probably six, seven of us with dogs at the opposite end of the corner, just like. Aww. is that big dog gonna attack our dog because it's protecting its coyote or like so we're all kind of chilling i was like you know what i'm gonna just i called animal services and i bounced my dog pooped i was like i'm gonna go inside now i don't need to be messing yeah. around with, with two coyotes right dude now. you're like ace ventura in the last 48 hours Girl. 24 hours bro 24 oh, hours, you're from man. ventura that's kind of you're like ventura. alex ventura <laughs> what a great name what a great alex name. ventura Alex Ventura. So, anyways, just a weird day today. But let's get into the nitty gritty of of, of what we actually plan to talk about. Just a weird morning, a weird afternoon. Uh, but yes, all done with that. Jay, uh, you sent me a text yesterday. Hey, Joe did well, which was nice. Uh, yeah, I I I was so it's busy, well. I missed the entire it's game, but I did watch the the recap. Tell us about what you saw, and then we'll get into details. Yeah, I was kind of going back and forth, uh, watching you know my tribe beat up on the. I mean, my record setting tribe runs wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've scored the most runs in the first six games since the nineteen seventy six Big red, red Machine Reds, I believe wow. it is. Um, and most hits, base runners. It's it, our offensive statistics. Let's have a mind boggling run right? differential. Right it's now. crazy. Yeah. Right. And so anyway, I was going back and forth and just seeing Joe, uh, I was kind of trying to, you know, 
see as much Padres as I could. And Joe really looked good. He looked efficient with his pitches. He struck out seven on limited pitches. I don't even even think he threw 90 pitches yesterday. Um, Pitched out of jam, especially one in the middle of the order with Aaron Dondo up uh, up with guys on base and, you know, only holding a one-run lead. It wasn't like he was – or a two-run lead. It wasn't like he, you know, had this big cushion to pitch through. Um, And so uh, I just thought, you know, especially what we talked about on Monday yeah. after seeing Darvish have a nice start, being able to go long, save some of the bullpen, even though it didn't translate into a win. Uh, Musgrove backing that up to close yeah. the series and end that losing streak. And what was it, four or five they had lost? So they 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 yeah. needed a win no matter what. I mean, whether so Musgrove also, pitched well or not, but he also, that was a nice uh, way to get it. He also gave us some nice uh, headlines, and I'll explain when we come back. This is Kaplan and Crew. We'll be right back. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Kaplan and crew with this modified crew. Grande and Lawhead with you guys here today. And this will be our last show of the week. We'll do a best of tomorrow. Um, we'll do it best of tomorrow. Uh, Jason's golfing, and then you know it is what it is. I the hope, whole crew will man, be back. Forecast. Yeah, I saw the clouds in the forecast again. Last but, two times uh, I've tried to go golf, and this will be the third one. I got back. The rain has come, and now it's just maybe like, you're the one bringing the rain with your exactly. Your golf you're bringing the animals. Days. I'm bringing the rain. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing uh, about 45 percent chance of rain tomorrow at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on Friday. All right. Well, good luck to you, man. <laughs> How about this? Let's give people some winners again. Price picks. Yeah. Uh, download the app, pricepicks.com, where you can scan that QR code. Here's the deal. When you do that, use our promo code GREATFRIENDS. Use our promo code GREATFRIENDS. Not only do you help us out, but Price Picks will match your deposit up to $100. Pricepicks.com slash GREATFRIENDS. Use the promo code GREATFRIENDS. Uh, Jay, are we two for two? I forgot what we gave out the other day. Did Machado do anything on Tuesday? Machado. Oh, um. I don't think he got those three that we needed, but Darvish right. did get uh, right. the, the strike uh, over five, five and a half strikeouts. Okay, because I think we so did I think two we're and three a half for total bases, runs, RBIs, I believe is what we did yeah. for Machado. I think he was two. Yeah. I think he, he got a hit in a RBI maybe. or uh, It looks like 0 for 4. He was 0 <laughs> so for he 4. Might have okay, yeah. yeah. So I knew he but did. Nobody, knew, nobody did anything that day. Yeah. So we were, th- we were three for four so far. All right. Is- so today – uh, you can go do baseball, basketball, hockey. You can do women's college basketball as well. Uh, there's so much to get into. Uh, they have currently they have specials where you could you can combine Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers uh, for more or less than 60 and a half points. You can combine Caitlin Clark and Zach Eady for more than 59 and a half points. I kind of like that. Uh, but there is uh, so much that you guys can go and do. And today's Thursday, so darts, obviously, duh. So we got a guy here, Jay, and Luke Lidler. He's mm-hmm. like the 17 year old dart phenom. We always bet his more of okay. 180s thrown. Do you know what that means? Uh, I I used to play darts a lot. I was okay, pretty good. I used to play okay. with some really good players. So in that sense of betting, I don't know what that means. So help me out with that because I've heard. Uh, you I don't know. What, I don't know what it means more. either. I just say okay. more. Okay. <laughs> so because he always and... seems to win. Okay, so I wonder if he's he's playing probably scoring cricket. Is that what he's playing? Do you know what he's playing? So if he's playing scoring cricket, I could definitely see. You're asking some very, very, very informed questions. Well, there's cricket is more the, uh, you know, cricket's the most popular game, I guess, um, among darts. And you can play it without scoring or you can mm-hmm. play it with scoring, which means that um it, no scoring cricket is the first to close everything and then a lot of times the guys will play that in order you have to close okay. 20 19 18 76 15 uh and then bullseye in order or you can play scoring cricket and it's an open board and then like if you have anything on 20 open and i have a close i can just keep racking up points so All i right. can keep hitting 20 20 20 until you close it and then it's no longer available to score and then i can go all over the board and then eventually i can start with bullseyes if i want and then score on those so i I don't know exactly what kind of i haven't delved into the pro cricket games (laughs) or the pro dart game dart game but i i'm more of a bar dart guy with with, yeah same here um, um 
but I, I like when I go back home um, with all my buddies that I still grew up with that are still living in, you know, I, almost uh-huh. every guy in their man cave now still has an old dartboard and guys we used to hang out with in the bars in our 20s. We will still get together and we'll throw a little money down and we'll, we'll throw darts still two, three in the morning sometimes. And uh, it's a, I've always loved throwing darts. I used to have a board in my house when I lived back in Ohio and it would have dart parties. And I'm telling you, this is 25 years ago. We were throwing down $20 a guy per game. I mean, there was big money on the All table. right, Otani. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Price Picks, where it's totally legal in California. So, uh, Jason just gave you a full, beautiful rundown of darts. We just normally say more than three and a half for Luke Lillard. Uh-huh. Luke the Nuke is his nickname, by the way, and he's seventeen years old. Luke he's the Fino. Nuke, I love that. Luke the Nuke. So, PricePicks.com slash Great Friends. Use that promo code, and you will get your first deposit matched up to one hundred dollars. All right, Jay. Um, so you were talking about just rec- this last segment. We talked about how Joe Musgrove had a good outing. Uh, Padres avoided the sweep, beating the Cardinals three to two. The offense, uh, the offense mm-hmm. not there as we'd like it to be. Obviously, on Sunday we'll skew the numbers a bit. The game two against the Dodgers and game four against the Giants. Those were the two games where like the Padres, are, their numbers look good because of those two games. When you score fifteen and you right. score fifteen in two games. Your numbers are going to look a little better, but on average, not so fantastic. But they scored six in a loss, too, right? I think one right. one game they had some offense, but then they got butchered at the yeah uh, at the pitching staff. Here's um, uh, what I want to talk about first, though. Joe Musgrove, and listen, it's April, so I understand if people think I might be reaching for a story here, but I'm not. I'm not. Joe Musgrove yesterday. Um, had some post game comments, and to me, Jay, this was a direct call out of former Padres closer, now Houston Astros closer Josh Hader, who famously here refused to pitch more. Oh, right, than three outs to the point where he even had a he even had a comment last year saying this, uh, saying quote. When asked about pitching more than three outs, he said, quote, it's a situation. It's the situation that we are at. Are we in the playoff race? It has nothing to do with the wow. offseason. It's the now it's the health. It's making it through the entire season. 162 games, not easy task to do. You see guys work overloads. They get injured. So Josh Hader, fantastic closer, great closer, but very particular does not want to come in mid inning, does not want to give you more than three outs, will not give you more than three outs. But yesterday, Robert Suarez comes in, and he's had three appearances. Two of the three have been for more than three outs. Yesterday, he needed five outs, and he did that. He got you the five outs. He got his third save of the season. Here's Joe Musgrove talking about his closer. Having a closer that you can go out there and rely on for more than just three outs is is huge to us here. So he's always willing to take the ball, and and, we're grateful for it. Yeah, that's a shot to Josh. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It just is. It just yeah, it is, it. but it's I, I it's think, it, but think, it's an honest shot. Yeah, I mean, from a perspective of a starting pitcher and anybody else on that staff, it's an honest shot to say, "Look, man, you know we're in a one-run battle. We need a save, and a guy that's you know we got a guy now that we don't have to hope we white knuckle through a eighth inning and can get him the ball because if we can't and it's three to three or four to three Cardinals, then guess what? Closer's useless in that situation." Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, I think it's a nice little shot across the bow, as they say, but it's also <laughs> a, a bit of a, it's a bit of a message to the more than to hater, maybe to the rest of the clubhouse to go like guys, like, you know, you know, we, we can do this cause we've got guys willing to do it as long as we kind of just bring it all together. Right. Like I'll get you to the sixth or seventh, you guys do what you got to do. And if we need a four or five out save, Suarez is our guy. We got that guy. We don't have to hope uh, things, you know, get perfect for, right. you know, the situation at hand. <laughs> then be in the ninth inning for, you know, the three out save, ex- particularly exactly the way this guy wants it set up for him. So, right. And I remember last year, and I'll never forget last year, it was a Monday in June or July. I think July. Um, and Hater had pitched on Sunday and Saturday, and that was another one of his rules. He doesn't pitch three days in a row. So he only gives yeah. you three outs. 
He doesn't want to come in mid-inning, and he doesn't pitch three days in a row. And I remember because I was at a Blink-182 concert waiting for Blink-182 to come on, and I'm watching the Padres in San Francisco on a Monday night on my phone as we're waiting for Blink to come out. And it's 4-2, to two, and instead of Hader coming in for a third day in a row, they bring in Luis Garcia, who we all remember Luis Garcia here, and the Giants tie it. Uh, they go to extras, and the Giants win in extras on a, on a, on a McCovey bomb by Yastrzemski. I think I filled in for you. That oh, what well, did you? Well, you were where? What I, I was in San Diego, I was, right? But I think I filled in for somebody because I think I remember talking about that on the next okay. day. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't remember, but I'm just saying. I do remember? I, I, yeah, yeah. That situation of you being at a Blink 182, and then that hater three day in a row. I, I feel mm -hmm. like I might have been on the show either that day or the day after talking about that whole situation. So the which... Padres, that really kind of turned the season, and I'm I, I genuinely mean that. As I go back, they went into that game where they were already kind of struggling. They beat the Rays, who were one of the best teams in baseball at the time, and that's what it was. They beat the Rays on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Hader came in and got saved 17 and 18. Then Monday night, refused to come in, and the Padres lost that game, lost Tuesday, lost Wednesday. That's right. uh, destroyed them on Thursday, destroyed them on Friday. And so Hader didn't even pitch for a week after that. Right. So he didn't and want to come in. Because he's like, they might need me later. He didn't pitch for a week after that. And the Padres lost, I can count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 of the last 18 games of the first half of the season. And it was about two or three days of Melvin just being totally uncomfortable talking about all that. Right, absolutely. And you could just see it. He was wearing it, and mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't going away for a few days. That whole, and as those losses mounted up, um, he just looked, he was squirming at the press conferences. Yeah. I remember that instance. They lost three of four to the Giants. They lost two of three to the Nationals. And I remember this one. This is when we all thought, oh man, this season's screwed. They got swept by the Pirates yeah, in the Pittsburgh. Pirates sweep, that's right. And then they go to Cincinnati and lose two of three. Two of, actually at the time, the Nationals were awful too. So you had three of the worst teams in baseball and they go out and win two of nine games yeah, after were, that josh Hader refusal and that was all the water they needed to take there was no yep. it did, that didn't matter how good that september was going to be that the the they water were so was, far behind in september yeah, that was it i mean going into september they were 62 and 73 last year yeah 62 and 73 and they ended up going 20 and 7 to, in september which is fantastic best team in baseball but at the time we were all saying like yeah what does it matter like yeah. what does it matter like all these empty stats they're putting up. They're not even going to. So it, it was just really, really interesting because you're right, Jay. I think it's not only, hey, let me just call out Josh Hader. It's a benefit to the pitching staff to have a, a, a closer that is willing to even try it. You know, like, do we have the same confidence that we had in Hader and Suarez? I don't know if we have that yet, but I just think it's a mentality for the starting rotation for the rest of the bullpen that if they, get to a situation in the eighth inning where they need somebody to get you more than three outs. Robert Suarez has been willing and has been able to do it thus far in his career. This is what he's done this year. Like I said, he's appeared in three games. He's pitched four innings. He got five outs yesterday. He's had three saves and ERA of two, two, five. He did give up a home run um, in that, I don't remember when it was, but he did give up a home run the other day. So it has just been it's 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 nice to see for the Padres to have Robert Suarez be available to do that. But yeah, Jay, uh, Robert Suarez was also asked about his willingness to do it, and he was just straightforward. He said, "It's quote, it's not easy, but I have my plan of attack. I just focus on that. With an off day tomorrow, I could come in for four outs. Thank God it all worked out. So very willing, very able, and I think you're right." the mentality of the rotation and the rest of the bullpen. Hey, if we can get to, you know, 23 outs, we can get a guy to come and get the last four. And yesterday came and get the last five. It's got to be a boost, you know, like you're not. And for the manager, you know, you're not walking on eggshells with this all-star closer. Sure. Who's, who's going to be a free agent and is looking out for his future. And 
this this guy who's got such particular rules and I have to go to the media and always answer for him because it's my call at the end of the day to not ask him to do it because that's what he wants. He doesn't want to do it. So the fact that that's kind of another yeah. less thing for the Padres to worry about. And right. by the way, will Robert Suarez come in with four outs to go and blow a save? Yes. Of course he will. It will happen. Yeah. It will happen. But I don't think that the Padres are going to ask him to do it every game. It just, if sure. the situation calls for it, it's nice to have someone that's able to do it and willing to do it. And he's a guy that wasn't brought and bought here like Hater was. H Hater was bought and brought. Mm -hmm. um, and there was that kind Suarez of. Suarez was ego. just bought. What's that? Sar Suarez was just brought from Japan. Right. <laughs> but he wasn't yeah exactly but you know there was there's an ego that goes along with you need me more than i need you and suarez is more of a hey i need you know i gotta there's a lot i gotta prove and and i want this job and i want the guy want you know to be to be the guy handed the ball and i want to be the guy that is the closer that gets his team back to mm -hmm. a, a postseason run and then then, then I can get paid, but I can get paid being a Padre and get paid yeah. by the Padres, not brought in and bought bought in because, you know, the attitude is you need me more than I need you. And I think right. Hater carried a little bit of that. And that's fine. I mean, and that's fine in a sense where hey, if you got that dog in you, like, but th that can be a counterproductive attitude, too, when it comes to the things that they, you know, uh, expected from him. and then the the ex expectations he would only fulfill right it's uh it's just it was kind of like it's it's been a fresher and i remember when he did come out when suarez did come out uh i don't remember what game it was where he did come and get the the extra save it might have been in korea it's just like wow look it's not even a story he's just doing it mm -hmm. you know like he's just doing it and like i and now obviously because musgrove said what he said like yeah we'll bring it up and we'll talk about it but the fact that it was just done and there was no hoopla about it it was just hey look suarez came in got the outs and we won the game. The first time he did it was the second, the big game in Korea where he got the last four outs in the second game when the Padres beat the Dodgers yeah. in Korea. Yeah. And the other nice thing about Musgrove kind of just firing that shot off the bow there a little bit and, and just kind of like saying it, moving on is it, it, it removes Schilt from having to like deal with it. Like I, like Schilt, like I wasn't even here last year. Yeah. You know, I never managed hater. Uh, mm -hmm. So Schilt doesn't have to go squirm and talk about it or try to, you know, defend a position or try to, you know, like Melvin had to try to do last year through this whole thing. Every mm -hmm. time it came up, every time a, a new and it came up a lot, it three came, days, it comes yeah, up a another lot. three days came up or another right. three outs came up. Like, so the nice thing I do is, remember is, that, too. I think it was not I think we all were fine. Maybe not all, but I think the majority of Padre fans understood like, okay, he's just a three out guy, but it was the third day. It was the middle of the inning. It was that like, everything has to be perfect for him to come in. Mm -hmm. Like when you compound all that together, the Josh Hader sandwich was not as tasty as it seemed, you know, like right. it just wasn't good. And he was making a lot of money. Yeah. And I think that was also what, and you, that's another thing. That's the extra. That's the chips on the side. Oh yeah. He's just looking out for his future. Because he's going to be a free agent next year, and he knows he's not going to be here. Everyone right. knew that Hader and Snell wouldn't be here once they stayed after the trade deadline, which was a mistake, anyways. We knew that they were gone. We knew the right. Padres couldn't afford them. Then we knew they were going to contract monster salaries elsewhere. So it was all that combined for Josh Hader. They were just like, "Ah, this guy stinks, man." Even though he's great, it's like, "God, oh, man, story here, story there." Just can't get away. It from stinks It stinks to have him in a way. Mm -hmm. He doesn't stink, but it stinks to. Have him. Stinks to have to deal with him. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, very interesting yesterday as well, Jay, uh, Jason. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, the Padres, are you familiar? Because, you know, listen, I watch the Padres pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. I keep track with the NL West. I'm sorry I'm not watching Miami Marlins baseball, but are you familiar with the name Luis Arias? I am. I mean, so I, you know. I wasn't until last year. Because the dude was flirting with 400 for the first right. three months. That, and that, okay, I'll admit, I wasn't until last year. Sure. Great. But the dude has uh, led the league twice in hitting. He has a career batting average of 324. His worst batting average of his career was in 2021 when he hit 294. Okay. And, dude, the Padres 
We're trying to get him. Hmm. This is according to The Athletic and Dennis Lynn. Uh, the San Diego Padres showed interest in Arias throughout the offseason and made a strong offer him, for him during spring training. A Padres source, however, said the team was more focused on Luzardo. As you can tell, they ended up getting Dylan Cease. But, Jason, a left-handed second baseman who leads the league in hitting. Hmm. This sounds familiar. You remember Adam Frazier? Yeah. And the Padres traded for him, and they already had a second baseman, but they got the league's best hitter, according to batting average. And then it didn't work out at all. He was terrible here for the rest of that season, and he right. moved on. And But I got to say this, and I know we can talk about it more in the next segment. The Padres are desperate for another left-handed bat, no? Yeah. Aren't the Padres just in dire need of another left-handed consistent bat? And when you're talking about Luis Arias, who, like I just told you, in his five years of Major League Baseball, his worst batting average is 294. And this year he's not doing well, but no one on the no one on the Marlins is doing well. They're terrible. Um it would be a welcome. I think yeah. it would be a I mean, big welcome. And I know but the athletic you've got an on, infield problem. Okay. When have we not? <laughs> right. <laughs> when have we not? When has AJ Preller ever been like, ooh, we already got a shortstop? You know, like, ooh, we already got a second baseman. They put Adam Frazier in left field, Jason. They put yeah. Adam Frazier, a second baseman, in left field. They put Jake Cronenworth, a second baseman, at first. They put Hassan Kim, a shortstop, at second, at third. They put Xander Bogarts, a shortstop, at second. Let's keep going. You know, mm -hmm. Jackson Merrill's a shortstop. He's playing center field. What this team needs, and it might work better once Manny's back on the field because the DH spot might open and they might have more flexibility that way. This team needs a left-handed bat. I'll let you jump into it. I'll let you get. I'll let mm -hmm. you get the first word on that when we come back. Uh, this is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and Jason. Our last show of the week. Uh, Scott and Browner. Everybody's back together on Monday. Scott, I guess, is stuck in Mammoth. I guess the weather's crazy up there, and he's trying to get out. But uh, we will all be back together on Monday. We'll talk more about Luis Arias and the Padres, and also we'll be joined by our boy Corby from BetUS coming up next. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just this crew, Grande and Jason, with you guys here. Uh, our last show of the week, we're off on Friday, and Scott and Brown are back on Monday. We are brought to you by Mountain Trust Realty. There's only one guy to call if you're looking to buy a home, sell a home, and that's Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper. And what I love about him is when you call 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299, Gary answers the phone. It's awesome. If you want to talk to Gary... He's an expert in anything that you need in the home buying, selling world. Mountrustrealty.com to get more information or just give him a call, which Gary loves, 858-376-1299. Jay, we were just talking about the Padres' interest in last year's batting champion, Luis Arias, uh, and we ran out of time. So I want to let you get in there before Corby Craig from BetUS joins us here. Uh, Luis Arias, uh, like I said, career batting average of 325, left-handed hitter, is a second baseman, mm -hmm. but like I said, AJ Preller, he don't care. He would just put anybody out in the field. What would you think about the possibility of adding a bat like that to this lineup? Who, um, in my opinion, desperate for another left-handed bat? Yeah, and you know, um, there's no doubt that they're desperate for another left-handed bat. I, I guess, and you've made a point uh, before we close the last segment that you know we've they, they've moved guys all over different positions. I think this was this guy's a, a second baseman. Yeah. Um, from what I at least understand. Right. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere there's something's got to give in that infield. I don't know where you go with, I mean, is Bogarts an everyday DH is somebody sacrificable is that, you know, is a, you, you move a Cronenworth to make room to move Bogarts to first. So you can, you know, cause I mean, you're stuck with Bogarts. Yeah. Contract. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean unless you can put Preller can pull off a miracle somehow, um, you know, that's, that's etched in stone right there. You know, I mean, he, he's yeah. there for the long haul. So to bring in another guy that you're hoping is coming for the long haul that plays at that same position that you move Bogarts to, you'd have to kind of consider, well, is Bogarts, you know, an everyday DH is he, I mean, Arias, first you look at his fielding, he has played the majority of his life at second. He has mm -hmm. played last year. He played 12 thirds right? at first. At first, okay. uh, with the twins, he played 
uh, quite a bit at third. At third, he yeah. also he also played about thirty games in left field, which okay, in my opinion, that's hey. a nice big hole over there. Sure, in left field, yeah, sure. Does he have the everyday you know ability to play left, the arm, you know, all of right. that kind of stuff? Because he's not playing third, right? He's not going to play third here. He's not playing third, or and... right now he kind of he might right now. Well. Yeah, I mean, eventually, I think Machado is going to be back on the field. You know, you got, you, you know, when he's healthy, you got a Gold Glover down there. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm talking about when Machado is is unavail right now. Sure, and I mean, you can pond him around a little bit, and I don't know how, you know, what kind, how a player like that responds in in the batter's box when he's being moved around to a lot of different positions. You don't know that, right? So you're always right. that you're you're playing with fire in a way. You know, there are some guys, I obviously uh that can do that and and still be what they are in the batter's box can a a a batting champion be moved around all different spots on the field and you know in a in a seven game span can he play three different positions that week um you know i I don't know how adaptable he is but you don't want to sacrifice why you're getting him in the batter's box because you're you're moving him on all different stations uh so because he's not going to play third when machado's out on the field and uh, you know, uh, you're stuck with Bogart. So you're, there's a, something's got to give. Right. Something does have to give, but it's, uh, it, it, I mean, the dude can hit man. Like the dude oh, yeah. can hit. The and dude, he's young. He, he's young. He's 26 years old. Uh, he's, <laughs> it's crazy. In 2023, in 147 games played, he struck out 34 times. That's incredible in today's baseball. I mean, in today's, in today's analytics, baseball, it's incredible. That's some Tony Gwynn numbers. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, dude, in his career, he struck out 170 times. I think Luke Voigt struck out 170 times in the one year he was here. I was here. just going to say, uh, <laughs> G- G- Giancarlo Stanton strikes out that much in a in a half a season. Yeah, it, it's it's incredible what this guy has been able to do. Um, and, you know, well, I don't know if it'll happen because obviously in the athletic report, they did say that they were more interested in Lazardo. They were more interested in getting a pitcher. Uh, Luis Arias is controllable through next year. He does make ten and a half million dollars, which would put the Padres about four and a half million dollars away from that luxury that that dreaded luxury mm-hmm. tax threshold that they will not cross. I promise everybody they will not cross that threshold this year. So it'll be interesting if they actually do it because I think they need something. I genuinely think they need something offensively. The pitching staff is set. The pitching staff is what it is this year. I think you have options in the rotation. You have options options in the bullpen. Shoot, you even have options as closer if you don't want to roll. If you don't want to roll with Suarez, you can probably throw in Matsui for a game here and there to close out a game. So maybe I even De Los Padres, Santos. Yeah, why not De Los Santos? I mean, he's got a he's got a live arm. I, I mean, I've always liked uh, I've always liked what I've seen from him. And, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, that's a different mentality, that closer role, right? You got to have that yeah. kind of whatever's between the ears there. It's like that hockey goalie, you know, um, you know, field goal kicker. Like, it's just a special brain that you have right. to just be kind of, you know. Um, but they've got options, like you said. Um, they do have options. And. It's going to be, I, I just think that they're not done. I don't think AJ Pillar's in. Whether that done happens in April, I don't know. But I just think that they are going to need to do something. Um, so we'll see if that becomes Luis Arias because the Marlins are terrible. And right. the Marlins have been trading away talent. And if this guy is only controlled through next year, I don't see why the, you know, it's, why, it why hold be- on to him? It's going to be interesting to see if Preller is, you know, uh, proactive or reactive in this season because it, you're like you said, it's proactive is going out and, and making that change, you know, earlier, May, April, May, getting something mm-hmm. that you dig your teeth into and put them on the team. Or is this roster going to survive, stay in a playoff race, get towards the trade deadline and then be reactive to that? And, and he's going to like balance the scales of, you know, are we good enough? to make that decision now or we or or should we see how right. this ship sails and and so that that's going to be interesting it'll be very interesting and uh i don't see corby on the line yet so we're going to move on to something while we wait for him and i think this is just <laughs> oh man dude when i tell you this this guy listen we went through it here in san diego we are very familiar with every single tactic every single negotiation every single pr spin you could think of when you're trying to move a team out of the city that you're currently in. We saw it with the Spanos family. 
we, I mean, Mark Fabiani was the master of, I think what was his nickname? Master of disaster or something like that. <laughs> he was legitimately a genius as to spin anything in Oakland. Not so much. John Fisher, the owner of the A's has done everything he possibly can to crap all over the fan base in Oakland for the athletics. He has done nothing for the last several years to make you want to be an A's fan. Mm -hmm. A, with the product on the field, the payroll is not even close to what a Major League Baseball payroll should be. And I think that's kind of what pissed me off a lot this offseason. Yes, the Dodgers are going to do their thing. In a capless league, you're going to do your thing. You're going to be If you're financially able to and you have the ownership that wants to, you can go spend a billion dollars in the offseason, and it's awesome for you. But all these national talking heads that said it, what the Dodgers did was great for baseball, how can you say that sentence when you have an owner doing what John Fisher has done to the A's? How is that allowed by baseball to spend no money, to do nothing to the stadium, to entice zero fans to show up to a game? John Fisher has done everything absolutely possible to get the A's out of Oakland. Everything he's tried to do in Oakland has been half-hearted. Everything he's tried to do with the city of Oakland to build a stadium, that's not he's not doing crap. The same way that the city council put a little stadium for Dean Spanos on the platter in Mission Valley, he's like, oh, that's nice, but what about downtown? Downtown? What do you mean downtown? Mission Valley, we're here. There's a parking lot. We'll build it right next door. No, we want to go to downtown now. We got to go to downtown. So this this owner from the A's is an absolute... And by the way, have you seen what he's done to these players, his best players so far on the team? Sending them down, cutting them. Estery Ruiz, who led the the, the base uh, major league yeah. in, in steals last year. He has literally demoted, benched, traded, or released the A's best players. And, Jay, have you seen this? No, before I get to this, because that's going to distract me. That's going to distract me. Here's the story. The A's are moving to Sacramento for the next three seasons. The Oakland A's are moving to Sacramento. They will be playing at a place called Sutter Health Park, which is the home of the Giants AAA affiliate, the Sacramento River Cats. How this is a stadium in Sacramento that holds 10,624 seats. And if you include the lawn and standing room, the Oakland A's will max out at 14,000 attendants, which, by the way, they can't. They won't get. get they can't. They won't get, get. The Coliseum. Right here is John Fisher, and I'll let Jay go oh, off on, on this. John Fisher saying, "Quote: We explored several locations for a temporary home, including the Oakland Coliseum. Even with a long-standing relationship and good intention on all sides and negotiations with Oakland, the conditions to achieve an agreement seemed out of reach. We understand." The disappointment this news brings to our fans as the season marks our final one in Oakland. Throughout this season, we will honor and celebrate our team, our time in Oakland, and we'll share additional details soon. Gross. Jason. Gross. The A's are moving out of Oakland officially. They're moving to Sacramento. And by the way, they don't even have funding yet for Las Vegas, so they added a fourth year as an option. The A's could be playing at a AAA stadium for the next four years. Gross. And the funny thing is, is they're going to go play. <laughs> they're going to go play. At the Giants affiliate, right? Their big right. brother. I mean, right. The, 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 right across the bay, the franchise that is functionable, the franchise with a beautiful stadium, with a fan base that they reward and, you know, uh, you know pay, players that they pay and treat like talent. And they're going to go into their <laughs> AAA stadium in Sacramento. I mean, how just absolutely ludicrous and pathetic. And you're right. How baseball didn't step in in this day and age of all the money that's out on the out on the perimeter of baseball and all the money. This isn't 50, 60, 70 years ago. This isn't the economics of baseball in the, you know, the trying times of, of economies that, you know, baseball is trying to, you know, grow. I mean, this is this isn't a time of. This is ridiculous right. that the fact <laughs> yeah. that the that the fact that the Major League Baseball didn't come in and intervene years ago and and say, look, you know, um, if you can't handle this, we will find someone that will and we will mm -hmm. we will go and we will do deals with the city of Oakland and we will make sure that this team stays in the at least in the Bay Area somewhere. 
even if we have to move them to Santa Cruz or San Jose or something and, and build a stadium and get something done so that these Bay Area Oakland fans can at least still have an semblance of, you know, because the A's are a very local brand. They're not, you know, the one thing about the Raiders is in the NFL, the NFL, you know, grew their brand globally. And the Raiders right. were, the Raiders were a, we're already a, and you know, you can find Raider fans in New England you, from the time they were just because the silver and black and, and what, what, you know, that brand brought the, the Raiders moving to Las Vegas isn't as, you know, disturbing because they're so global and so national. Whereas the right. A's are just, they're a neighborhood brand. They're right. Oakland only. I mean, yeah, they've came, they originated in Philly, went to Kansas city, but like, let, let, let's, let's call it what it is. You know, their success as a franchise, you know, there's their four World Series. Yeah. Three in a row with with Reggie and those guys. Mm -hmm. And then the one with Conseco and then so many of the successes they had right on the doorstep with Giambi. And, and, and they, you know, they've always put I mean, out. Shoot, they were good with Bob Melvin up until recently. Yeah, no, they always won ball games in this money yeah. ball era. You know, this Billy Bean re, 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 re resurrected you know, um, that them as a small market team after the La Russa run and the Conseco run and everything where baseball economics got out of hand, they were able to kind of just, you know, kind of sift through it, but um, they belong in Oakland or at least nearby, at least, yeah. at least Santa Cruz, San Jose, somewhere. Sacramento's nearby. Not, but that's, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> but, but okay. But it's not. And it's a, this is just, this is them just trying to go find an Airbnb right now. Yeah. yeah. So, cause they're going to Vegas. It's pretty disgusting, and it, it it brings me back flashbacks. But this dude's just doing gross. it like it's gross. he's doing it to the to the max, you know. Like this guy's doing it absolutely to the max. Spanos, at the end of the day, he never was like, "We're going to L.A." and that's it, you know. At the end, like I'm not giving him any credit, but what Fisher's doing is just blatant and in your face. And at ridiculous. least when Spanos went to find a temporary home, he did it in basically LA. I mean, yeah, it was a right. soccer stadium, but at least right. he didn't try to go, Hey, we're going to Bakersfield. Right. Hey, we'll, we'll go, oh. hey, we'll go to, we'll go to right. you know, Lancaster. Reno. Yeah. We'll go to Reno. We'll go to Palm right. Springs. I mean, he, he, this is a joke. We're going to go play at UNLV's baseball stadium. No, yeah. he went to, he went to LA. Um, and the way the chargers were ridiculed, the A's will be ridiculed and the A's have been getting ridiculed. And it's it's unfortunate too because, you know, I remember countless interviews with Philip Rivers, Gates, whoever else was, you know, the players that were here, Weddle, and they're like, dude, it's not it's not up to them, it's not up to us. Mm -mm. And that leads me to the story that I brought up earlier, where I was going to get distracted. Jay, have you heard about this story with the last dive bar? No, but I love so the last bars. dive bar I is dive bars. the last dive bar is a not a bar. But it's a local apparel company, and they've kind of oh. been the face. They've been the face, and they've been big proponents of the sell the team movement in Oakland. Okay. So they've been selling a lot of merch that has like sell the team stuff or anti moving to Vegas, obviously. Okay. They yeah. even made wristbands, uh, last dive bar wristbands, and like players have been seen wearing them. Even the manager of the Oakland A's, Mark Kotze, has been wearing has been seen wearing one. And it turns out, dude, before all this movement stuff. Like they actually had a partnership with the A's and they were selling apparel with the A's. And it, as I'm soon as they started, now, yeah. as soon as they started doing sell the team stuff, the A's acted like they never worked with them and they gave them a cease and desist. Like <laughs> so they, they partnered, they partnered together. God. And then once the sell the team stuff happened, they're like, Hey, what, what are they, what are they doing with our logos? We never gave them permission and gave them a cease and desist. So now, Players like the guy I brought up, Esther A. Ruiz, who was a Padre at one point, he led the uh, American League in stolen bases last year. He was absolutely their best player for the first series of the season. Um, and Brent Rooker, another guy who was doing pretty well, he they've been seen wearing the last dive bar wristbands, uh -huh. and every player That's that has great. been seen wearing one has either been demoted, benched, traded, or released. How pathetic. How sad. How so Oh, my God. The A's. This Fisher guy. I mean, I'm looking at their website right now. I love this one. They've got a they've got a they've got a, sh a sweatshirt, a shirt design where Dave Caval is. He's in quotes and he's being 
he's being string puppeted and he's Pinocchio. <laughs> His nose oh, is Pinocchio. Great. And the and the quote is, we're committed to Oakland, Dave Caval. And there's fingers on a puppet mm-hmm. string and <laughs> he's got a Pinocchio nose. And now they're calling it, quote, or hashtag wristband gate. And now they're totally That's leaning great. into it as the story's catching more and more wind. Oh, you can I go get a site. wristband gate. The truth is out there. The last dive bar. Oh, so great. they've got great stuff. This is oh no, awesome. yeah, everybody, dude, they're a merch company and they're they do great merch. Like they do great apparel. I'm glad. And you if you're an it. Oakland A's fan, dude, this stuff is is money. It is money. But it, ain't it crazy, man? Like you imagine being so freaking petty, and especially like, dude, you're moving to Sacramento, bro. You're going to Sacramento and you're going to play in a stadium with that seats ten thousand, and you're not going to get ten thousand. You're no. not going to get ten thousand people. And you know what's crazy? I saw. Um, let me. Uh, someone that covers the uh, the the AAA team in Sacramento uh, tweeted out. Uh, so in this stadium, there's no family room, there's no uh, mother's room, there's no shade or bathrooms in the bullpen. There's one batting cage for the entire stadium. You the, know the only the time po- they're going to get the people. The Dodgers like- are going there. Yeah. That's when the that's the only time they're gonna get people. Right. When 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 Dodger and Yankee fans right. and go people go, dude, we can get a we can go see the Yankees in this little ballpark that yeah. that far up close for this ticket price, and it'll be all the yeah. other team. And 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 when they play somebody that doesn't have any type of grip out in that area, you know, when they play a, a right. Cleveland or a uh, you know Tampa that has no fans in that area, nobody's gonna go. Yeah. I want to talk to the people of Sacramento. Cousin Nancy, listen up. Get your people together, okay? I'm going to bust a Kamala Harris right now. <laughs> Don't go. Don't. Don't, Don't go. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go watch the River Cats. I don't care if they put go their support on your Groupon. River Cats. Don't do it. Don't do it, Sacramento. Don't do it. I And trust me, those tickets will not be cheap. Those tickets well, no, will not be affordable. Because the A's will pump them up when the Yankees come to town. The sure A's will, will pump them up when the Dodgers come to town and the Giants come to town. Sacramento, listen. Don't do it. Don't go. Don't come. Don't. Do not support John Fisher. Do not support the A's. And don't yeah, give you're me right. this. Oh, they're I support the, the players. Thing. They're gonna they're gonna charge major league parking prices and even probably more because there's gonna be limited parking. It's gonna be a smaller uh, you know selection of park. So yeah, don't mm-hmm. do it. Just I don't care how tempted you are. I don't care how much your kid wants to go see a game. Don't do it. Yeah. I also want to tell this to MLB players and all MLB players that are going to be free agents listening soon. Don't sign there. Don't do it. Don't take that man's money. And he's not even giving you much money anyways. Like if you if you're with the A's, you might be desperate for a job. But I said this and I'll say it again. Vegas, don't do it. Don't give them money do the Kansas city thing and say, no, I don't care how good the chiefs are. We're not going to pay for their stadium. And when we come back, Jay, let's talk about that because Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I've proposed, I've, I've said it on the show, been a proponent. You're a billionaire. Pay for your own damn stadium. Yep. Let's talk about that next. Cause the chief fan, the Kansas city chief fans said the same thing. It's Kaplan and crew. We'll be right back. Welcome it's back. Good. It's, all good. it's all good. You know how the show goes. Welcome back, everybody. Captain and crew with Lawhead and Grande with our final show of the week. Scott and Brian will be back on uh, Monday. We were just talking about the uh, Oakland A's announcing that they're officially moving to Sacramento first before they ever move to Las Vegas. And they signed a three-year deal to play at the AAA affiliate in Sacra- of the San Francisco Giants, the River Cats of Sacramento Stadium. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more because I do find it interesting what Kansas City voters did in Kansas City in regards to the Chiefs. Before we get to that, though, I do want to remind everybody that we are brought to you by BetUS. BetUS, it is now March Mania, people. This weekend, it's the final four, and there's only one place to go do your legal wagers, and that's BetUS. Right now, BetUS has a 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. That's right. The industry's craziest 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits. They also have 10% gambler's insurance, and BetUS is now accepting crypto. And if you do use crypto, they're offering a massive 
200% crypto signup bonus. So it's March Mania. You can't go wrong by going to BetUS with their exciting live in-game betting. So get started by visiting BetUS.com or give them a call 1-800-MyBetUS to learn all about their bonuses and special offers. BetUS, where the game begins. Jason, yesterday uh, it was announced that Kansas City voters have rejected Good. a proposal to pay for the Chiefs renovation or the Chiefs new stadium and the Royals renovations uh, in Kansas City. And you know what's fascinating about this story is that the Chiefs have obviously had incredible on-field success. Um, they have won back-to-back Super Bowls. They've won three Super Bowls in the Mahomes-Andy Reid era. And do you remember when the NFL NFLPA survey came out like two or three weeks ago? Clark Hunt, the owner of the Chiefs, was rated an F as an owner. Hmm. Was not There was not a lot of glowing reviews about Clark Hunt, the owner. Which can tell you, like, you can win with a bad owner. You can't win with a terrible owner, but you can win with a bad owner. Chiefs are proof of that. But I do find it interesting. Jackson County voters have resoundingly voted against sales tax to extend stadium projects for the Chiefs and Royals. Uh, The stadium sales tax would go towards building a new stadium for the Kansas City Royals and renovating Arrowhead for the Kansas City Chiefs. 58% of voters said, "Uh uh-uh. We ain't paying for you, dog. No thanks. I've always said it. I know Browner doesn't agree with me. Browner just, hey, if you want sports, pay for it. Dude, if you want a stadium, pay for it. And I do think in certain cities like Buffalo, it might mean a lot more to the community than it does elsewhere. You know, Buffalo just paid for the Bills' new stadium or, or part of it. I believe in Minnesota, they paid for a lot of it. In Vegas, they obviously paid for the Raiders' stadium a lot of it. And they, the A's are trying to get money from the Nevada people for the A's stadium. But especially in Vegas, bro, you got all the casinos there. Like, build your own damn stadium, honestly. And in Kansas City, I did find it interesting. I thought the Chiefs might be one of those places where they would agree to it. But, Jay, uh-uh. They ain't paying for it. Well, if you're a Chiefs fan, you go, this is a great stadium. I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, why, why is my... Why isn't my, you know, the old, you just mentioned, uh, you know, you want, you want football or whatever you pay for it. Mm-hmm. Browner says that, well, I am, it's called $350 a ticket price. Right. It's called season tickets. It's called parking. Mm-hmm. It's called concessions. It's called all the, all the gear right. I buy, all the stuff I get my kid. It's all of that. I, I am paying for it. Right. Right. We are paying for it. And right. so Wait, you're right. So if I give you tax money. Am I getting free tickets to go to my it, stadium? Exactly. Do I get a tax write-off? Right. Do I get a write-off my tickets and all the gear and all the parking? Do I get to keep all those receipts and write those up off against my taxes because I my taxes are already paying for the stadium? It's ludicrous. Eight games a year? Nine? Maybe a playoff game or two? I mean, if you're lucky, come on, man. Like, flip the bill. You're a billionaire. And, and it goes back to this. I, I, I hope that you know, this attitude might carry over from this whole controversy that we're we're dealing with here in California right now, where it's, uh, you know, certain chains are have to pay $20 an hour. Well, well, why why are you vilifying? And now, oh, could you see how much a hamburger costs? You see how much a fries costs? And it's it's the guy that's going, it's the guy or the girl that's making $20 an hour. The CEO is making $65 million a year. Mm-hmm. So the CEO is making $65 million a year and it, they're spinning the narrative that the problem is that uh, uh, that a worker is, is maybe making 30000 now instead of twenty five or 32000 or 34000 instead of 26000 a year. And so it's like, wait a minute, you know, the CEO has been giving you a terrible product possibly. You know, right. that, that hamburger, you know, you're complaining about a hamburger that, that it, it's not even that good. The hamburger yeah. stinks. The fries aren't even real food. The, you know, the, the Coca-Cola is iced down and it's coming out of a fountain. You're paying three seventy five for that. You were paying. So so it's like you were paying two seventy five. You didn't have a problem. Now, three seventy five for that crap is this big issue. It's the same thing when people are like, you know, that own a Hummer or or one of these 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 cars that get 
you know, seven miles to the gallon. It's like, uh, uh, can you believe gas is five? I mean, that's a stupid purchase if gas was a dollar <laughs> a gallon. That's a dumb buy if if gas was a dollar a gallon. Yeah. So, you know, I get it. And then to an extent, but like, I'm glad to vote. I hope more voters start doing this and start going, dude, too. we're sick of this. You're already, you know, you're already fleecing the tax codes. You're already finding every which way as a mm -hmm. billionaire, not to pay your fair share, you know, buy the city, build the stadium, buy, buy the, buy the property and build the stadium. And guess what? It ain't going to hurt you in the long run. Now you can probably, if you, if you don't hit the tax payer, you can probably increase those as long as you're winning, increase those ticket prices and those parking prices and those concession prices every <laughs> single year. Yeah. I was at the outlets yesterday and I saw Wetzel's pretzels. It's funny how like, um, they complain about having to pay their employees twenty dollars an hour, but then they're advertising, "Hey, we're paying twenty dollars an hour. Come work for us." You know, yeah. come on now, right, right. But we're also going to charge you. A we still need workers, and right. you know, but we're also going to charge coming. you an extra four percent on your bill because to pay the wages that now we have to pay. But the, our executives are still going to rake in the millions, anyways. So. Just a very and fascinating share, thing. And the shareholders are getting paid. And, you know, um, we'll find every, you know, we're, we'll find every corner to cut. We'll we'll feed you things that aren't even food. Mm -hmm. although, and we'll, although I do agree with Brown, McDonald's pretty good, though. I'm, if it, it, whether you like it, or, then you got to go. Then you got to keep going. Tastes then you got to like pay. You got to pay what you, they want you to pay them. Brother, everything everything in life is expensive now, man. The other day, dude, I remember you used to be able to go to get some chicken, some chicken breasts for like five bucks for a package. Now, good luck. It's like 15 for like a pound of chicken. It is incredible. Dude, a, a, a carton, not even a gallon of oat milk cost me $7. A, a, a 12 thing of brown eggs is like $10 now. So... If it, everything is expensive and it's just, it, it, it's not, and guess what, everybody, it ain't going to be cheaper ever again. It's never going down. No matter who nothing's you elect, going down. nothing's going, nothing ever goes down. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do drive a Hummer and you complain about, about gas prices, I think Jason just made a good point. You did it to yourself. At, at $2 a gallon. Guess what? It, it's, it's still stupid. <laughs> it still is very stupid unless you I, have the type of disposable income that you should keep your mouth shut about right. if, if you have that kind of disposable income if it's 12 dollars a gallon shut up right uh jay let's get into something that i found incredibly hilarious and that is jim harbaugh uh jim harbaugh had a first press conference because the chargers started their off-season program uh jim harbaugh wants everybody to know that january 1st is not the new year don't think about that. January 1st, not the new year. This is the new year. You know, it's like the uh, start of the new year. Happy new year. That's where it feels. You know, it's like that, uh, that first day of school, family reunion, um, homecoming. I know those that uh, most people think January 1st, the uh, start of the new year. Those that espouse to Christianity, Catholicism. Uh, correlated with the birth of Christ, but uh, us in football today, April 2nd, start of the new year. So just great, great day. Um, it was just a great day for football, for meetings and um, training, doing a lot of baseline training. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I think the more he talks, the more I'm going to be like, is this going to work? Is this going to work with adults again? Ooh. You know, this is the kind of thing where, listen, he's a great coach. Don't get me wrong. The Chargers will be better than they they were under Brandon Staley. That's not going to be that hard. Um, this is going to work for for how long? Because that, with that adults, with adults, with kids, they don't have a choice. You signed up to go to Michigan. You signed up to go play for Jim Harbaugh. That is your choice. That is you as a kid. You went there. This is what it is. That's the coach. That's the cap. That that is the leader. Of here, like I, I can't say anything. And you're, you're still making millions and millions of dollars. And a, you either get drafted there, you get traded there. You know, like you gotta buy into the Harbaughness. Like you just have to, because if not, the Harbaughness will be at, will be played out pretty fast. 
Well, there's a difference between being a great football mind and a great football coach. Mm-hmm. And there's no doubt he's a great football mind, which, which to your point translates in the college level, he's going to be a great coach. Cause what, what you said, like, look, whether it's 75, 85, 95 kids on a college football roster, um, they're all glad to be there. They're all happy to be there. And they're still under a certain guide guidance of their parents. Right. So they see the coach still as a parental figure, but yes. you're right now. Guess what? Now you're coaching parents. <laughs> you're coaching millionaire adults who right. have children. Right. Now, right. So now you're right. And it's a, it's a, it's a sleeker roster. It's 48 to 50, whatever it is. And a high, a high number of those guys are high profile, the mm-hmm. high salaried. Um, they're not just happy to be there. Right. Right. You'll and have so, your, you'll have your Khalil Max and Joey Boses that will take pay cuts and want to play for Jim Harbaugh, but then you'll have your Keenan Allen. That's like, no, I'm out of here. Exactly. And you're going to have other guys that, you know, they have, they've, you're going to have a, a whole variety of different personalities, right? Mm-hmm. You had, like you said, there's a different, and now they've gone on to adult life and they're not afraid to be, you know, eccentric. They're mm-hmm. not afraid to be different. They're not afraid. Like this isn't boot camp anymore, right. which college is. Like but I said, I the- will promise you though, like the first OTA, that first training, the first training camp practices, this is going to be marvelous. It's going to be excellent. It's fresh. It's new. It's not Brandon Staley. This is what no we doubt. came here for. This is, this is horrible. But how long, unless you're winning, unless you're winning a lot, how long do you put up with the Harbonnets? In San Francisco, they were winning and winning and winning. And ownership was like, bye. We can't handle yeah. you no more. Right. Here's Jim Harbaugh. Let's get even weirder, bro. Let's. That's weird. <laughs> that wasn't even that weird. Jason, you want to avoid concussions? Yeah. You need to build your neck up, my friend. The back, the back is just an untapped gold mine of lean muscle mass. That, uh, and then we want to, we want to, we want them to know. We're gonna know. Um, and then, then we call it key performance indicators. You know, what's your external rotation? You know, what's your neck strength? You know, flexion, extension. Uh, yeah, do you want a steel rod uh, in your neck, or do you want to, do you want to, do you want a noodle? Uh, advice, piece of advice. I mean, you want that, you want that steel rod, a trunk, you know, that that goes into the, the, the roots go into the traps. And uh, this guy's starting to make. Be this guy's starting year. to make. Be he's starting to make. Year, he's starting to make Biden and Trump sound like they make sense. <laughs> this guy. Who's this great? Is this guy running for? Is this guy running for president? What? I mean, this guy's nuts. Down your chest, your that back. Way. The Dude, back is an unta- I wonder where he got it from, Jason. Here. Where do you think he got this uh, this notion that the that the neck and the back are untapped sources of of strength and 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 just being a man? I can't wait well, he, to find out. He got it from his executive director of player performance, Ben Herbert, who comes from Michigan with him. Take a look at this creep weirdo. Express this to the guys as well. Big picture, I view training. The interesting thing about training is that. I don't know if there's two people that view it the same. Uh, There are concepts that different people believe in that may match up, but I view training in this way, and this is how I told it to the guys. Uh, My first goal is to make you harder to break. People often may say, training, uh, we're going to break. We're going to break you down and build you up. Uh, My goal is not to break you. My goal is to make you harder to break. How are we going to go about doing that? how we train your neck in traps to protect your head, right? The most vulnerable areas of the body, in my opinion, in the game of football, the head, right and left shoulder, right and left hip girdle, right and left hamstring, right and left ankle. So through your training, you have to be proactive at training those areas of the body. So the neck work that I introduced today, the trap work, the four-part cuff sequence to address the four rotator cuff muscles in their shoulder girdle, Uh, introduced them to some hip work, introduced them to some ankle work, right? These are things that are paramount. If you want to make a football player harder to break, 
your training has to be sound, in my opinion. It's all my opinion. Your training has to be sound in those areas. Why is he talking like a psychopath? Wow, dude. Why is he just like... I, I got that dude is a villain in a in a movie. That dude yeah, is like man, a, a that, cult those leader. Were, those were two of the most scariest sound bites I've seen a sports anything in a long time. I mean, wow! This is, my, this is gonna be such a fun year to cover this team because a I've never seen a director of player performance ha- be have a press conference. Right. So please, more Ben Herbert. And that was then, like a Joe Rogan interview. Oh, it was. It was absolutely straight from a Joe Rogan podcast talking about the importance of of trap strength. It, it was there was like six minutes of that that I was like, "This is the best press conference I've." Ever I'm seen. bewildered right now after what I've just seen. Yeah, yeah, dude, that was awesome. I freaking yeah. love love what's going to come like i said man i got I mean, you know what you know what i need to do you know what i they really have, need to do they have to I be in to... the playoffs this year for this nuttiness to work like they they can't miss the playoffs yeah or this is just going to be this is just going to sound and become more nuttier right that's what i'm saying if you're not winning this is going to get so old so fast this whole neck steel rod traps quads <laughs> quadrant of your hip flexors <laughs> connected to your, your oh tailbone. like i'm gonna get your head strong you're right you're right your you're left. You're, yeah. what did he say the hip uh, the hip uh hip what did he call it the, the, the hip girdle girdle yeah <laughs> hey, dude i cannot wait for a charger player to get injured and they put justin herbert questionable hip girdle Right hip girdle. His left one, right. he worked he he, yeah. he worked his left one correctly, right. but he didn't listen to the strength right. and conditioning expert on his right hip girdle. Right. Do you which is why I think, did he this guy train Tiger Woods? Because you remember here at the farmers when Tiger pulled out, he was like hurt and he came and tried to play at the farmers and he said something about his glutes not activating. My glutes didn't activate. <laughs> this is that's the same playbook, bro. What is this right girdle hip thing? Oh man, that yeah. was special, dude. That was yeah. That was it's like that was like a skit. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what the first thing they did, by the way, together, Herbert or Harbaugh and Herbert, um, Herbert Ben Herbert. I gotta clarify, Ben Herbert. Uh, they were on their way to the to the Orange County facility that they're still in. They're not in L.A. and El Segundo mm-hmm. yet. And he goes, you know what? We need to stop at Home Depot. Herbert tells Harbaugh this. This is on Chargers.com, and Herbert tells Harbaugh, we need to stop at Home Depot. Harbaugh's like, oh, yeah, what do we need? He goes, we need to get a shop back. We need to get a shop back and some magic erasers. We need to clean the place up. Because the number one impression I want of my gym is that it's clean. And this is like, he's, this is our sanctuary of weight rooms. I'm telling you, bro, you guys got to go to Chargers.com. I'm dead serious. He needed, Har- you imagine Harbaugh and Ben Herbert pulling up to Home Depot in Orange County or Costa Mesa and buying a shop back. Because about, the Chargers don't have a freaking contract. shop. The Chargers don't you, have their own vacuum. How about you? Sh- you're an NFL franchise. How about you? You you contract a maintenance company, like a mm-hmm. like a janitorial service company, to come in there once every two, three days, whatever it is, and have them bring the shop. Do you think that psychopath <laughs> is going to let someone step foot in their gym that he to clean? They're gonna. By the way, he's talking about. He too. He was talking, Jason, bro. He was talking about how you have to re rack the rates, the 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 weights to perfection. Like it's an art of re racking weight. It's an art of how you're in this gym and this is our weight room and it, there's a meticulous way that it needs to be kept. Yeah, I love Ben Herbert. I want to oh. meet Ben Herbert, and I'm gonna ask the Chargers if we can interview Ben Herbert. Dude. If you're listening on radio, thank you all. It's been a fun week. It was a weird week. Everybody's back on Monday. And if you're watching on YouTube, we'll do Uncensored coming up. And if you're watching on television, thank you all for tuning in to Kaplan and Crew tonight on Cox Your View. Always appreciate it. Jason Lawhead, at Jason yeah. Lawhead on social media. Thank you so much for filling in. At Jason Lawhead Comedy on uh, Instagram. There you go. Thank you all. Talk to you all next week if you're listening on radio, Uncensored next on YouTube. Peace.
All right, man. We all done. We are all done for the day. We didn't get to everything, but no. we got to the, the stuff. I had to get Harbaugh's loony dude. I'm so strength glad. coach on here, dude. So much more um interesting than even like we were gonna maybe talk about the Malachi Flynn thing and right. you know some other stuff. Oh, but like thanks for reminding me though. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, like, I'm so glad that like we even got the the strength and conditioning coach in there. That was just must see TV radio mm -hmm. listening. I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> it's so good. I mean, that it's, I'm still I'm gonna be thinking about Malachi, that all weekend. You want me to send it to you? You want to have it on your phone so you can just watch it anytime you want, so you can psycho look at you like it. Like the dude was just like he was like. Remember, you ever seen the movie Full Metal Jacket? Yes. Remember Absolutely. Vincent D'Onofrio before he mm -hmm. killed him when he was like putting his gun together and he was like, yeah. He had that like, he was like mm -hmm. that's what he reminded yeah. me because he had the bald head, right? The oh, yeah. He had shape his head. Dude, he reminded me of the scene of Full Metal Jacket when he finally, yeah. I was just like, whoa, dude. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for reminding me about Malachi Flynn. Not about Malachi dropping 50 last night, but about the new promo code for uh, Tori and California Holistics. Mm, uh, we I got a new need. one, which you always need. Write it down. Kaplan crew, not Kaplan and crew. Kaplan crew. Kaplan crew. Not Kaplan even the. Crew. Not even the. Eh, eh. Nothing. 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 Kaplan, Kaplan crew. Kaplan crew. Twenty percent off your purchase at Tory and California Holistics. Uh, and by the way, those guys are great. There. I just, you know, uh, as uh, someone who's not regularly on the show all the time, I want to give a shout out to everybody. They're so helpful. They're so like just attentive and they polite, are. and they you know they tell you, you know they they like once they find out your name, they get they know what you may have bought a few other times. Like, hey man, mm -hmm. I had this one thing one time. Oh yeah, let me, and boom! But within a second, they're on the computer. And they're, they're never like, oh, in a this. hurry. They're never in a hurry. They're never Dude, trying I... to get you out of there. They're never trying to oversell you stuff. Right. They're just they're literally like just advice. They listen. Right. They're great. What I, what I love about what they do is like they'll put you in the waiting room so they can attend to you personally in the actual bud room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like the, it's not like you walk in and it's like a 7-Eleven free for all. Right. You know, where you're just like you just grab right. whatever you need or kind of figure it out or whatever. Like they'll have you wait in the waiting room for a little bit. Like I've never waited longer than like three not minutes. long. And there's and, like you said, there's a purpose to it. Right. So they can be attentive to the people that are in right. there. And then when you right. get in there, the same. Right. And so like that intimidation factor should goes away immediately because I know it's still new. And I know we talk about it because we, we all have gone and we've all experienced it. And we all, but if you haven't yet, truly, honestly, if you're still here watching this and you've never gone and you've wanted to go, I promise you like the intimidation factor goes out the window the way they do it there. Cause you check in and then you literally wait for someone to come help you. And it's like, there's no stupid questions. It's all it's all like a learning experience. I still learn every time I go. I ask a question. Always. I, I ask new questions every time I go. Every time I go, I ask for something new. Last couple of times, I've been into the drinks more. Just wanting yeah. to know. Because I never buy drinks, right? I would always mm -hmm. buy something edible, you know, mostly. And uh, so then I was just kind of like, yeah, what is this? You know, what is this? Mm -hmm. Maybe. And then, you know, they tell you. They they take you around. And now there's like, though sometimes I'll have a little drink. And then. The drinks can last because they have like these right. resealable caps and you can put them on ice with like club soda. Yeah. And then you can have like a cocktail where you're not drinking the whole can or whatever. And I can have it over periods so, of time. And now I know on, like, oh, so you don't this, just, bro. yeah, you just don't drink this like a Red Bull. No, no. savor it. Have a little bro. bit, put some club soda on it and, you know, bro, trip out on this. You ready? Yeah. Um, we had a cocktail night at my house like a couple weeks ago. Okay. And my wife is actually allergic to alcohol. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. So she the only alcohol that she can drink is gin uh -huh. without having some sort of like she gets a like she's got like a thing, a skin thing. So she uh she, she just doesn't drink alcohol no more, but she does partake in Tory California holistic stuff. So we were having a cocktail off. So I got I fall F1, as you know. Mm -hmm. Lewis Hamilton released a non-alcoholic tequila really? and yeah and so i went to go get it at total wines and it's a great substitute like does it taste for, like tequila no really but it's kind of yeah. it more agave ish it tastes okay. more agave okay so it's in that realm it's a decent substitute but like my wife isn't opposed to having 
like some it's not the 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 buzz that that she doesn't like it's or the or uh, the alcohol that it's the alcohol that just makes her little woozy sick Do, does her yeah yeah but she takes gummies and she'll do whatever so I went and i got a little four pack of something at Ka- uh, tori and when when drinks called for soda water i'll put some of the the thc drink in there yeah with the lewis hamilton non-alcoholic oh. bit of a head change for it even though she wasn't drinking alcohol and now she's not getting the alcohol effects but she's getting right. a buzz and she's having right. a cocktail right she's having that's a cocktail. awesome and Isn't so crazy? let me let me ask you something how did she find out like what was the, the was it just over time that it was she over was time real, she developed she yeah, she developed you, something without because we used to drink all that we used to you know like normal couples or whatever right. we would go, go out and drinks. have drinks yeah. yeah have drinks have people over have drinks you know we've you know when we when she when, she, when me and her met she was twenty one so we'd go out you know get yeah. get fucking hammered you know yeah and and it just I would say probably little after COVID it was kind of already semi hitting her and then just like like honestly like three times in a row she would have not even like a lot she would have maybe max like three drinks of some sort and she would get like uh just ridiculously bloated she would feel stuff in her head she'd turn super super and this wasn't like a buzz i'm not describing a buzz like i'm saying like a real redness to her and she went to like multiple doctors and and holistic doctors and like yeah it's the alcohol it's the alcohol. yeah you, you, know, you can develop you see it all the time yeah you can develop yeah. al- you can develop allergies as you get older mm-hmm. a lot of people do do that and yeah. so even if you and so ne- you're not going to know you're allergic to alcohol right. when you're 12 right you're not uh, right I'll, 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 how would you know you're not a, you're right. not at happy hour you know? right <laughs> so next absolutely. week we're going to texas or we're going to fredericksburg like you know and mm-hmm. uh, one of the days we're going wine tasting and a wine bus and she's like mad fomoed out right she's like what the fuck man i want like she loved having a wine buzz like it was right. she loved it right and i was like dude just do it like fuck it's one day right. like if you get sick one day you're not she is, doesn't get sick she just feels weird and gross is texas legal do they have dispensaries no i don't think they do no, that's do why they? i would have taken yeah. something it's illegal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we yeah, even like get trip i even trip out like i have um I've had like pretty significant knee pain and I I don't have it in front of me, but I have this, um, Dr. May's 50, 50 THC CBD lotion that I put on my knee. I was like, I don't even think I could take that. Like, am I, can I get in trouble for that? If they catch me with that in Texas? Ooh, probably Texas is weird. They think they're right. like the freest place in the world. And mm. then it's just like, you're not even allowed to be a woman or have, or have marijuana. There, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. But, it's a weird but you place. got, but you got your guns. Yeah, exactly. You could have, you know, you can have a gun, you know, you know, sewn onto your arm, but, right. uh, don't yeah. you dare have a little weed lotion for your don't have any meat. weed lotion or you know mm. yeah don't don't have a birth control pill on your we'll mm. shoot you with that sewn on arm gun. you know it's crazy <laughs> i just thinking about this now too we did a uh, beer friday with a company that does the weed drinks and browner ended up buying a bottle it looked like a tequila bottle but it was a thc drink and he said that shit would fuck him up like he would use it like in a cocktail yeah and like she would pour like shots of it in his cocktail and he said he was fucking to the moon dude like dude uh, it was the first a, the first yeah. time i forget which one i bought from uh tori the first time i bought one of those you know thc drinks mm-hmm. i drank like the whole can like in that day yeah. dude i I was I've never been that spun off of smoking weed all day, <laughs> bonging hit like as a young dude. Yeah. Like I was like, okay, wait a minute. And so the next time I went in, I was like, well, this one really mess. And I told the guy, he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, that's what I was like. He's like, no, let's just yeah. use them as like little cocktails over ice and then put it back in the fridge. I'm like, okay. He's like, yeah, man, no. He's like, yeah, you of course you got messed up yeah dude trail. yeah you can get fucking you can get lit dude you have some yeah. fun i'm trying to find that bottle because it was a gorgeous bottle i don't even remember what it was called though yeah dude, but it was like spin you yeah. he was like it was expensive and it was worth it he said but dude like yeah people have been mixing in uh cannabis infused stuff 
into instead of alcohol recently it's like i think i'm doing that more 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 like i've i've you know um i still enjoy a bourbon now and again i still mm -hmm. enjoy a beer a good beer not like i'm not gonna go buy a Coors light or anything i still enjoy a really good like you know craft yeah. beer I'm, you know this, some of the stuff that especially san diego produces a lot of the brews right. um and i'm a red wine going guy to, um north park beer fest tomorrow oh is that tomorrow yeah what time is that? I don't. Well, what time know. Are you going? I don't know. My buddy just invited me. Well, Jeff, people know Jeff here. Te from Ballast Point. Well, text me because um, text me because you know your wife's out of town. My wife's out of town. I'm taking her to the airport early in the morning before I supposedly nice. go golfing. If uh, uh, she's going to Chicago, um, so uh, see some family. So um, I'll hit you up. Did I say tomorrow? Yeah. yeah did you say tomorrow? What day is tomorrow? Friday. Saturday. Sorry. Hit me up, hit me up Saturday. Okay. She's gone until okay. Sunday night. So hit me up. Uh, hit me up Saturday. Maybe I'll come out there and meet you for a couple of tasties. Sick, bro. I'll let you know. All right. Uh, yeah, let me know. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning and then in. Saturday's Jason. Final Four. So. Oh yeah. We might be able to catch one of the games and have a couple of brews. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in, Jason. You're the best. We'll oh, talk to so everybody fun, uh, next week. Peace. Peace.